Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're going to be talking about RC circuits from physics to electricity and magnetism. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw an RC circuit. What is it? So imagine you have a battery here connected to a resistor and a capacitor. All of this is in series. It doesn't necessarily have to be in series. There's different configurations. But this is the kind that you're most likely to see in class, so I definitely want to cover this. This resistor has a resistance R, this capacitor has a capacitance C, the values don't matter, and let's say this battery has an initial voltage of V0. And basically what this circuit does is when you first have this circuit running and hooked up and connected and everything, we say the capacitor acts like a short circuit. It's like it's not even there. Imagine just for a second that I were to completely erase it and it's just a straight line, like just a normal wire. That's basically what the RC circuit looks like at first, like as soon as you turn the circuit on. But after a long time, once the capacitor becomes fully charged, now it kind of acts like an open circuit. In other words, there's no current flowing here at all. Imagine the bridge is out. That's kind of what the capacitor is going to act like after a long time. So in other words, let me write this down. After a short time, the capacitor is going to be a short circuit, which means it's like not even there. And then after a long time, the capacitor is going to act like an open circuit and it's not going to let any current through. The reason why it does that is because we say the capacitor is fully charged. I want you to think of the capacitor like a bank for charge. And once the bank is full, it can't let anyone else in. So maybe like a nightclub is a better example. At first you gotta let people in, then you're full, then you say no more. Now let's talk about the equations associated with the RC circuit. We say that when the RC circuit is charging, that's the exact situation I just laid out a minute ago. The voltage in the capacitor, which let me just draw that real quick. We're saying the voltage in the capacitor, VC, positive, negative. If you were to actually measure this voltage, then the voltage would be equal to V naught times the quantity one minus E to the negative T over tau. I don't know if you have to have this equation memorized or not. It could be on your equation sheet, in which case you don't have to. Having said that, I would have it memorized because I had to, but that's because I was an electrical engineering major, and hopefully you're smart enough not to be an electrical engineering major. Also, this tau right here, that's known as the time constant. And basically what the time constant is, is it describes how quick or how slow the response is to this charging capacitor. And I'll explain that more in the graph that I'm about to draw in a minute. But first, tau has an equation. It's equal to R times C, the resistance times the capacitance. And if I wanted to draw a graph of this voltage over time, here's the voltage in the capacitor, here's time. So at the beginning, there's no voltage at all. That's because of the short circuit aspect, but it's quickly going to charge, 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 charge. And then once it gets close to being full, there is a horizontal asymptote in this graph where it cannot actually ever touch this number, but it can get very, very close. So it's essentially touching it. And that limit, that highest value is V naught. It's the voltage on the battery, which makes sense. And just to show you what the graph would look like with a smaller time constant, it would look like this. In other words, it gets charged very, very, very quickly. So the blue is for a low time constant tau, and the red is for a high time constant tau. A low time constant means it charges quickly. A high time constant means it charges slowly. And then one last thing I'll say about this is that we can also measure the voltage in the resistor. The voltage in the resistor is just going to be the voltage in the battery minus whatever the voltage in the capacitor is. And obviously, since this value is changing constantly, that means the resistor value is changing constantly. As a matter of fact, we would say, at first, the voltage in the capacitor is zero, which means all the voltage is in the resistor. But after a long time, like we said, what happens with this RC circuit, the capacitor then becomes fully charged VO and the voltage in the resistor is zero. And that has to do with the fact that we're not getting any more current anymore. So that's basically everything you need to know for the charging scenario. Now there's one more thing that can happen here. 
it's possible that you can have a switch in this RC circuit. So in other words, I'm just adding a switch right here at the start. Initially, maybe it was connected like this, but after a while, maybe we flip the switch and now the circuit is connected here. And when you move the switch to this position, what you need to know is that you essentially just cut off the battery entirely. And now you're just left with this little circuit that is literally just a capacitor and a resistor. When this happens, even though there's no battery, the current is still going to be flowing. You'll still have a current, at least for a short time. The reason why is because your capacitor still had all that charge stored in its bank, but very quickly the electrons are gonna leave the capacitor, and then after a long time, everything's going to be zero. VC is going to be zero, and VR is going to be zero, because you've run out of charge, like having a battery that ran out of power. So then the discharging equation is very similar. It's going to be VC equals V naught times E to the negative T over tau, or again, tau is equal to R times C. Look how similar that is to the charging equation. The only difference is the one minus in the parentheses. This is the charging, above is the discharging. Very similar equations, but they work opposites of each other. So in other words, if I were to continue that graph that I was making before of the charging versus discharging capacitor, or let's say here is my V naught, my peak voltage, then when we're charging the graph looks like this. And then let's say at this point right here, we flip the switch and all of a sudden we start discharging. Discharging looks like this. We shoot downwards and then we trickle, trickle, trickle until we get to zero. And then let's say you hit the switch again right here, which is totally possible. Then you're gonna have charging again. So the red is a charging capacitor. It's the graph for a charging capacitor. And wherever you see blue, that's the discharging scenario. And that's basically everything you need to know for RC circuits. So definitely study all of that. Make sure you've become familiar with the charging versus the discharging, the open circuit versus the closed circuit, how the capacitor and the resistor behave after a short time and for a long time, because all that stuff can show up on the test. So thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.